To better understand why I found this story to be so scary, let's jump right into this bite-sized retro recap of the troop. Before that though, here's your warning, there's spoilers ahead. The story starts with a troop of Canadian Boy Scouts led by Scoutmaster Tim arriving on a small island off the coast of Canada called Falstaff Island, which as far as I can tell is a real island on the northeastern side of the country. There are five members of this troop, not including the Scoutmaster. Kent lives under the shadow of his father, their town sheriff, and he sees himself as a self-appointed leader of the group of boys, which leads to some conflict. Max, he's more easygoing. He's best friends with the not-so-easygoing Ephraim, who goes by F. F tends to lose his temper quickly and takes it out on those around him, except for Max, of course. Newt is the stereotypical chubby nerdy kid of the group that you so often see in these kinds of stories. He struggles with self-image, inventing false versions of himself online to compensate. Finally, Shelly, he's the strange one of the group. He leaves the others as well as the reader uneasy about his intentions. He enjoys finding cracks in the fabric of the group, then he tries his best to make them larger, leading to murderous consequences. Once the group is on the island and settling into the cabin, the story doesn't take long to kick off. Even as they are settling in, a stranger in a boat has run ashore. He is clearly sick and can't stop eating, even ingesting debris and animals on the shore. He approaches the troop and asks for help, which Tim agrees to provide since he's a doctor. He tells the stranger that he's free to stay the night in the cabin, but it quickly becomes clear that this man is beyond saving. Tim restrains the stranger, and the next day, understanding that the threat is serious, sends the boys out on their planned hike without him. It's clear at this point that Tim too has become infected by some unknown sickness. The boys go on their hike, where Kent does his best to assert his dominance, but gets them lost. On this hike, the reader really gets to know more about the boys. After the hike, the boys return to the cabin where the troop sits around a fire, and Tim explains what is happening with the stranger. He asks Max to join him in the cabin and help him operate on the man. He asks Max because Max's dad works as a mortician back home, so he has some medical experience, however minimal. Inside the cabin, Tim cuts the man's stomach open, and just as he does, a giant tapeworm-like creature shoots out of the man's wounds. It latches on the stranger's neck, choking him to death before moving to attack Tim. Tim and Max watch in awe before Tim cuts the worm in half. Afterward, the pair run out of the cabin, Tim and Max tell the rest of the boys what happened, Kent demands to see the body, Tim protests, but he is too weak to stop Kent. The mysterious illness is causing Tim to deteriorate rapidly. Kent convinces the other boys that they need to lock him away so he can't infect them. They agree, and the boys lock Tim into the dark closet in the cabin. After locking Tim away, Kent takes a swig of a bottle of whiskey that the Scoutmaster drank from earlier. And as you can guess, this infects Kent, who the next morning begins displaying symptoms as well. The storm is moving in quickly, and the boys begin really freaking out. They go down into the cellar. However, they don't want to let Kent in because he is sick. Kent and F get into a fight where F splits his knuckles after punching Kent. This leaves it up in the air whether he gets infected, but I think it's heavily implied here that he isn't actually sick. Keep that in mind. The boys eventually let Kent in, mainly because the storm is getting really bad and they feel really bad. The next day, the boys leave the cellar and see the damage that the previous night's storm caused. The cabin has been crushed by a fallen tree and by extension, Tim has been killed. Tons of white worms begin crawling from his body. F, Max, and Newt leave to find food somewhere on the island since Kent ate everything secretly the night before. Shelly stays behind and essentially tortures Kent. While hunting for food, F begins speaking to Shelly using the walkie-talkie that he found. Shelly convinces him that he's infected, and that he can cut himself open to pull the worms out. F begins hacking himself up. Back at the cellar, Shelly leads Kent into the water, where he kills him. Worms pour from the wound atop Kent's head, filling the water and affecting Shelly in the process. Shelly doesn't mind, though. Instead, he's enjoying this new freedom to be who he is, a killer. He doesn't mean to get off the island alive. F, Max, and Newt return to the camp, having failed to find any substantial food. Kent is missing, so Max and Newt try to find him. While they are away, Shelly secretly convinces F that the only way he can truly rid himself of the worms is by burning himself. F agrees, and then Shelly pours gasoline from the generator onto F and lights him on fire. F horrifically burns alive. Max and Newt return to find the burnt body of F. They figure Shelly did it, correctly, since he is missing. They decide that they need to escape, and the only way they can think to do that is using the boat that the stranger arrived in. The only problem is that the boat is missing spark plugs. But Max remembers seeing something shiny in the stranger's stomach when they cut it open. He figures they are probably the spark plugs, since the sickness makes the infected person eat anything they can. The boys go back and retrieve the plugs. They wash them off and leave them on a rock to dry. The sparks mysteriously go missing shortly after, presumably stolen by Shelly. Following the sweet yet rotten scent of Shelly, Max and Newt find a cave where they believe he is hiding. Inside the cave is dark, but they are able to locate the missing plugs inside. As they move to retrieve them, Shelly attacks. Shelly is grotesque at this point. He is as thin as a skeleton, his stomach is horribly distended, full of pulsating white worms. 
He's even claiming to be their mother. His stomach explodes, releasing tons of these little tapeworms covering Newt and infecting him, leaving only Max unaffected at this point. Terrified, the boys run, leaving the needed plugs behind. Back at the camp, the duo sit around the campfire debating what to do next. Newt is bad off at this point, so Max decides to return to the cave and retrieve the spark plugs alone. In an incredibly cinematic scene, Max descends into the cave, using only the light from a flare, passing over what was left of Shelly on the ground. He carefully grabs the plugs and quickly retreats. The boys use the boat to escape the island, but are stopped by the military, which has quarantined the island. Newt is killed when it is clear that he's infected, but Max is spared. Long after the incident, Max has undergone a ton of observation and medical examinations. He is deemed cleared and released back into the world. By this point, the whole town knows of the worms and the sickness, and as a result, Max is treated differently. He struggles to get over the things that he saw on the island and resolves to return to Falstaff, claiming that he has a deep hunger. The ending is up to interpretation on whether Max is infected or not. I choose to believe that Max is not infected. I mentioned that the story reminded me of Lord of the Flies, and that is because one of the major themes in this story, in my opinion, is growing up and finding who you really are. I think that every boy in the troop struggled with self-identity, and on the island, away from the influence of adults, they were forced to confront themselves, finally coming to terms with who they were. F had to confront his anger and whether it would control him in life. Ultimately, he struggles with this control, and when faced with the prospect of being infected, he finally takes control of his own fate, leading to his self-mutilation. Kent saw himself as a leader, and on the island he filled that role. For better or worse, his pride and desire to lead allowed him to be easily fooled into drinking from the bottle of whiskey. Newt, a nerdy nature lover, saw himself as awkward and used a fake online persona to be cooler, braver, and more good-looking. On the island, Newt did his best to act this role in real life, leading to him taking chances and paying the consequences. Shelley, the psychopath that he was, wanted to be free of societal rules and restrictions, to play his games free from adults. Essentially, Shelley is a killer, and he finds himself on the island. The only boy on the island that doesn't struggle with this self-identity crisis seems to be Max. He didn't really want to be something or someone other than what he was. He just wanted to be friends with Max, and then maybe there's some more subcontext there. I believe he is the only person who didn't find himself on that island, and that is why I think he wants to return to the island. Back home, Max has lost. He doesn't see a future for himself. He doesn't know who he is supposed to be. I think he wants to return to the island to find what the other boys did. That is what he is hungry for, a purpose. During the entire story, small articles and interviews are embedded in the text, giving the reader a greater glimpse of why the event on Falstaff Island happened. These sections of the story reminded me of Carrie. This isn't just me saying this, the author himself says that he was inspired by Stephen King's novel. These sections describe a Dr. Edgerton who experimented with the worms to gain a pill for weight loss for wealthy people. The creatures were eventually sold as weapons though, and it's suggested that the military allowed the man to escape in the first place to the island as a test, and the troop of Boy Scouts were nothing more than guinea pigs in the experiment. Overall, I enjoyed Nick Cutter's The Troop. It was a thoughtful coming-of-age story, all while telling a horrifying story about an all-too-realistic parasite. Worms like this very much exist, so to me, a hypochondriac of sorts, this is one of the scariest stories I've read in a long, long time. With that being said, I give the troop four bars on the scary meter and four bars on the bloody meter, leaving us solidly in the bloody, terrifying category. That wraps up this retro recap. I want to hear your thoughts of this book in the comments though. Maybe I missed something or maybe you had a different take on the story and I always enjoy reading those. So feel free to share. Well, I've said my bit. See you next time.